We are taking a live look this morning at the U.S. Capitol. Well, later today, Congress will commemorate the 50th anniversary of the Vietnam War. House lawmakers will hold a ceremony to honor the service and sacrifice of those who fought in one of the longest and most controversial conflicts in our nation's history. Nearly 3 million Americans served in Vietnam. More than 58,000 were killed. Hi again and good morning everyone. Thanks for waking up with the Valley today. It's now 10 minutes before 7 and we're starting our non-stop news and weather all the way to the top of the hour to help you plan your day. And we start with breaking news out of South Fargo. It was an unexpected alarm for guests at a Fargo hotel early this morning. Fargo firefighters were called to an early morning fire at the Biltmore Hotel on Main and I-29. Someone spotted flames around 3.30 this morning on an outside wall of a section of the hotel that's being remodeled. Guests there were evacuated for a short time. Fire crews did douse the flames quickly. They then, ha then had to cut open parts of the wall to make sure that the fire wasn't still smoldering. Investigators are still trying to determine a cause of the fire. There isn't a damage estimate yet, but the fire was contained to a small area, and firefighters say that it should not affect the function of the hotel. Coming up on 651, time for weather and traffic on the ones. And we start this morning with meteorologist Robert Hahn. In for Mick, and uh, you can see some uh, darker clouds are moving into the valley. Yeah, moving in from the west, we've got those clouds on the increase. We did have a nice sunrise today, but we're going to see a, a lot of clouds and a, quite a bit of rain as we head through the rest of this morning. 57 degrees, winds out of the south at 6. They'll continue out of the south 5 to 10 miles per hour. Also 57, Grand Forks, Devils Lake, Jamestown, 53 in Bemidji, 54 up in Bedette. Cloud cover pushing off towards the east, so we'll see increasing clouds. It's already happening here in the Fargo-Moorhead area and increasing rain chances. And again, most of it is light, but we do have some pockets of some moderate, even some briefly heavy rain. Right now, the heaviest making its way through northern portions of Minnesota. That will continue to push off towards the east, off towards the uh, northwest, Langdon down towards uh, just west of Devil's Lake. A few showers trying to pop up, but the, the big bulk of the area will continue to push off towards the east and the trend will be for this area to slowly shrink on up and dissipate as it pushes across the river here in Fargo. Rain is on the doorstep. It'll be here in just a matter of moments. Northern Plains, we are dealing with that rain here, but elsewhere, mostly quiet conditions. Down south, a lot of rain, flooding rain, way too much rain for parts of Texas and Oklahoma. They've already seen way too much of it already this year. A few showers in the Rockies for us. We will see a few showers this morning, and again, that area this morning should slowly continue to shrink on up and dissipate later on today. A chance for some showers and some thunderstorms. Today's highs in the 70s, overnight lows dropping down into the 50s, maybe a couple of upper 40s, mostly clear skies, maybe a touch of fog in the morning, particularly over in Minnesota tomorrow. Lots of sunshine, some haze, even a little bit of smoke possible by tomorrow afternoon, warming well into the 80s, some upper 70s off towards the east. And that's just the beginning of our warm-up. Today, good chance for rain. Tomorrow, some mid-80s hot and muggy over the weekend with a chance of storms. Some of those could be strong. That is a look at your weather. Time now for a look at traffic with Al Ahmed. Good morning, Al. Good morning, Robert. Good morning, everyone. Folks, if you're on Interstate 94 and you want to go down to northbound Interstate 29 at the tri-level, you're just going to have to wait. Uh, if traffic is backed up on westbound Interstate 94 on the ramp, on to northbound Interstate 29. They're dealing with the same thing if you're on eastbound Interstate 94 and want to get on the northbound I-29. It is a mess out here. There's absolutely no two ways about that. Uh, there's a cone zone that you have to drive through if you're pulling onto the ramps as well. It's, uh, it's a mess. I don't know what else to tell you. Traffic is just creeping along that, the traffic, that traffic that is moving, and in some places it's just playing out and out spot. Uh, flashing lights are everywhere, and that's, of course, uh, indicative of the crews that are working on the roads, and they're working right next to the road surface. You have to be extra careful, and obviously it's creating some frustration for some of these other drivers that are out here as well. And to top it all off, we have a stalled semi westbound Interstate 94 at just on the west edge of the tri -low. The hood is up on that. I'm sure he'd rather not be there either. Drive extra carefully this morning. If you want to get on northbound Interstate 29, I strongly recommend you take a different route. Take University Drive or get off in Moorhead and drive through. Al Ahmed, Valley Today Traffic. 6.53 now as we turn back to your news headlines. Developing for you this morning, police have identified a woman whose body was pulled from the Red River near downtown Moorhead last night. However, they are waiting to release the name publicly until relatives are notified. A kayaker spotted the body around 6.30 last night in the Memorial Park area north of the railroad tracks. Police say the woman appeared to be between the ages of 30 and 50. 
They do not suspect foul play. An officer on the scene told us there were no prior missing person reports. Two men are in the Clay County Jail after an attempted armed robbery, shooting, and a chase in Moorhead. Witnesses heard a gunshot outside an apartment building in the Romke Park area around 1.30 yesterday afternoon. Police say no one was shot by the bullet, but one person was pistol whipped and had to be taken to the hospital. However, the victim is no longer cooperating with the investigation. The nearby Moorhead pool was placed on lockdown with a number of daycare children swimming there at the time. A nearby recovery and wellness center also went into lockdown during the incident. And minutes later, an unfamiliar man showed up and tried to get into the building. It turns out he was one of the men who was wanted by police and was later arrested. 27-year-old Alfred Lamar and 25-year-old Lawrence Leslie Jr. are in custody. Investigators are interviewing two other people in connection with the shooting. Developing for you this morning, state health officials in Minnesota say a child is critically sick after developing a rare infection while swimming in a Minnesota lake. It happened at Lake Minnewaska, which is just about 30 minutes south of Alexandria. Officials say the child is suffering from a suspected case of PAM, a very rare and severe brain infection caused by an amoeba. Officials say you can reduce your risk by keeping your head out of the water, using nose clips or holding your nose shut, and avoiding stirring up sediment at the bottom of shallow freshwater areas. The FBI is looking for more possible Minnesota victims of an international sextortion case. A Florida man was just convicted of using the Internet to prey on young teenage girls who he threatened to expose online if they didn't cooperate. Now, there are about a dozen screen names that Lucas Chancellor typically used, and parents are being told to look for them on their children's computers. We've got the names listed on your screen right now. We also have them posted on our website, valleynewslive.com. Some of the names to watch out for, Argon 1049, Captain Obvious, Cameroon, and Victor Hugo. You're asked to contact the FBI or your local law enforcement if any of these names pop up on your family's computers. The North Dakota Supreme Court now says that campus police cannot make arrests off campus. The ruling stems from an NDSU police officer's DUI arrest last year several blocks off campus. But we wanted to know if this ruling would have any impact on other cases, including the high-profile death of NDSCS student Andrew Sadik, an investigation that has, at some points, been led by campus police. Fargo police say the Supreme Court ruling will not have a huge impact on the patrols in the NDSU area. The state University system says it plans to consult with the Attorney General's office to look at legal options to best provide student safety. It can be hard to find the time to get back, give back, but at a plasma donation center, they are making it as easy as possible for you to help save lives. BioLife Plasma Services are all around the Red River Valley and we join the Valley Today's Christy Larson live at the Moorhead Center with more on how easy it is to help save a life. Good morning, Christy. Good morning, Kyle and Lisa. Yeah, there's so many myths and facts out there about donating plasma, how much you can do it. So we thought we would go to the experts and ask them, ask them exactly what it goes for. And so Kayla Beeler has been explaining it to me this morning. Plasma donations are a thing that are needed right here, even in our community. And they really do help people every day. Absolutely. All the plasma that we collect here is turned into life-saving therapies. So we have immune deficiencies, burn victims, trauma patients, hemophilia, things like that. So you are really helping to save a life when you come donate plasma. And we've talked about it too, that when people come here, they really do go through a lengthy process to make sure everyone is as healthy as they can be so that when they're donating, they are doing a great job at it too. Yeah, absolutely. They do have to go through a pre-screening with one of our nurses to make sure they're eligible for the program. After that, it takes about an hour of their time twice a week. They can donate twice a week with a full day in between donations and they're compensated for their time on top of that. And really, when you think about it, too, it's something so simple for you to do. You can come to the center, no matter which one you go to, West Fargo, Fargo, Moorhead, they have a daycare center. It's a little own personal me time to be sitting in the, one of these chairs for just an hour. Yeah, absolutely. We do have a free supervised playroom for all of our donors to come in and utilize, so we do encourage that. But we do have three locations here in the FM area, as well as the one in Grand Forks as well. So it's really, we try to make it as convenient as possible for yeah. people.
And you do get a little compensation for your time. And if you're looking on how you can donate or which location to go to, you can look on valleynewslive.com. We have a link on our hot button to the BioLife Plasma Services pages. And Kyle and Lisa, something so simple and only takes a little bit of time to make a big difference. Worth it for you and worth it for all the people that really rely on these donations to uh, keep their lives going. Christy Larson reporting live for us. Thank you. Let's get our answer now to our question of the morning on Facebook. Today's question, 3% of the population own what? The answer, something Christy would love to have. We should have given that uh, a hint earlier. A pet pig. You can take part in our question of the morning at our Valley News Live Facebook page. She loves page. piglets. People Rain are, just about here in Fargo Moorhead. Rain Robert. is just about here. People will be squealing about that <laughs> as we uh, see the showers and maybe an occasional rumble of thunder moving on through if we can take a look at the radar. There we go. We've got the radar up and the uh, showers, maybe a few thunderstorms as we head through the day today. Temperatures right now in the 50s, warming up into the 70s. Hot as we head through the weekend, a chance for a few strong storms on Saturday and Sunday. Thanks for waking up with the Valley today. More local news and weather.